This lesson will show how videos are used in face-to-face -face classrooms and how that can then be extended to online classrooms. Specifically, how videos can improve online discussions where students share time in a web-based forum like Wimba or Illuminate. And I hope that uh, the viewer will decide to make and upload videos and then share those videos with online colleagues. You'll be having a short quiz at the end. What are some of the reasons for using videos in the online classroom and discussions? How do they use videos at Stanford University? This is the future of videos, I believe. What are the names of some of the video sharing websites similar to YouTube? What are the names of some of the free programs that capture the movement on the monitor? And can you name at least three skills that Tony Wagner of Harvard says that teachers should be instilling in their students? This video is intended for students who might take online courses. The U.S. Census estimates about 15 million people are studying in college, and many of them will take an online course. So this video is for about 5% of the U.S. population. Now, many students may find that moving online, there's a lot of reading and typing. They might look for ways to make their online experience richer. So many teachers are adding video in two ways. They're presenting information and making a video of that, and they are recording the presentation for later viewing. In other words, they will show a DVD on a projector in class, but then they'll also have a camera recording their presentation for other people to view. Or they'll use something like Camtasia to capture a uh, performance. So first, the teacher or students can present information to a class by playing a video on a screen that every student in the room can watch. This is real-time watching, and generally there's no chance for review. The teacher's lecture or the student's presentation can be captured using a camera for later review, and this is a second way that video can be used in a classroom. The video can be watched by students who miss the class. Let's look at how teachers use cameras in the classroom and then see how this information can apply online. Um, they have a new way to teach, they say, at um, Stanford University. The videos are displayed in an online environment which allows students to select a part of the screen to um, enlarge. First of all, they capture it using a wide-angle lens it's sitting at the back of the room. This is the camera right here and pointed at the entire room. The actual frame of reference is much wider than just the screen. They can be projected into iPads and tablets. The key thing is this little um, box it's a guide. The student can drag a mouse within this guide box and it will allow you to zoom in and move around the actual video. The following video is from the Stanford University website. You'll notice the little box which is for navigation on the side. I'm not going to move the screen. You'll see that the operator is moving with the mouse here. You'll move where the camera is showing. What part of the video the camera is showing. Now watch. If you watch right here, you can see this um, mouse appear and move. See, there it is there. He's moving it around. And it's moving there. A box there. The, the frame is in red. And that frame moves as he moves the mouse. So one more time, I'm just going to let it roll in real time so you can see that the mouse button shows here and he's going to move the frame up. The 
So that's an example of what they're doing at Stanford University. We can see that video in the face-to-face -face classroom is growing in use, with many videos produced by teachers and some videos produced by students. Now videos in the online classroom, both of these uses of video, teacher produced and student produced, are appearing on the online environment. The first method, the teacher produced video, can be posted by the teacher in the online environment. We see this in lectures produced by Camtasia and other screen capturing software. Koss and Rawson mention a variety of them, including Jing. They're developed by TechSmith. Screenomatic, Screencastomatic. And they want you to create things like this. Um, screen Toaster is not available anymore and it's been closing. YouTube, Vidler, and Vimeo. There's Vimeo, there's Vidler, and this is YouTube. Of course, you have Why I Love Vidler there. All of these video sharing sites offer ways for viewers to make comments on the site. That might be problematic for students that don't want to leave the classroom management system, such as Blackboard. And it also adds to uh, confusion. Where do you leave the video uh, comments? The second area, student produced video, is a potential way to make online experience richer for students and teachers. Most production by online students is by typing and by speaking in an online Wimba or Illuminate session. The rest of this lesson will cover why we need student produced video in classes both online and face-to-face, -face, with a focus on online. We'll cover four reasons why video is helpful in learning and suggest some ways to use videos. First, the four domains from small Dino. Actions. Cognitive domain. We often make connections between materials to be learned in the mind. The affective domain, or emotional appeal, videos have a power to engage emotions in ways that reading sometimes can't. Psychomotor domain, um, how-to videos are sometimes better for learning a step-by-step -step skill. A video allows the viewer to view steps, pause, slow down moments, features 
that seeing a person in real life you might not be able to do or might feel embarrassed to ask, such as, can you blow that glass bulb again, but this time slower, please? And then the final one is uh, interpersonal domain. Socializing can take place by sharing an experience with the group. Deliver, a video can deliver that experience. There are reasons for presenting information to the, by the teacher to students. We're developing seven critical skills, according to Tony Wagner. Critical thinking and problem solving, collaboration, agility, adaptability, initiative and entrepreneurialism, effective communication and written communication, accessing and analyzing information, and curiosity and imagination. Think about projects that teachers have given you. What did these products do for you? They helped you learn skills as well as content. We can think of these as the four C's, A, A, and I. Critical thinking, collaboration, communication, and curiosity. Adaptability, accessing information, and initiative. These come from Tony Wagner's book about preparing students for global competition. As participants in online lessons, as teachers and or as students, we can benefit from learning to ask two questions. These key points come from the checklist mentioned on page 234 of a textbook by Smaldino. Is my message engaging and compelling for my target audience? And did I tell the story effectively? Some students who attended the summer seminar might be familiar with BrainSmart. It's an organization based in Florida. And one of the presentations was about what sort of strategies can be used to engage students and learning. Learning in general takes place when we are more and more engaged. They have something called the Brain Smart Retention Probability Index, which is basically if you listen to a lecture, there's five percent you'll remember about five percent of what you heard six months later. Whereas you may remember as much as ninety percent of something that you've taught. Uh, having audio visual or some demo can quadruple from 5% to 20% the amount of information that you've retained. Um, perhaps a week from now you will remember this picture because it was pointed out to you. Um, one of the other guidelines for effective video making is don't make them too long. Uh, we should use video not only in face-to-face -face classrooms but also in online classrooms. We've seen how the use of video allows creative review, particularly use it, remember that little box that they use in Stanford. And we also have seen that there are a variety of ways that teachers can use to capture video. Um, in closing, this is an appeal for students to propose to professors when it's time to make presentations on WIMBA. Can we make WIMBA and